What does that sound, you ask? Welcome to the Rec Show Podcast, a show dedicated to beat makers around the world. Kick back, relax with the host, Golden Mind. What's up, everybody? Gold my here, and welcome to episode number 45 of the Rick Show Podcast, man. I told y'all, <laughs> you know what I mean, going through it right now, but I had to get this episode off, man. I had promised my guy uh, Radicule Beats and um, Sleepless in Flatland, man. So, first of all, right now, you're listening to Takatan Beam, and I'm probably not saying that right. Yeah, man, Takatan Beam off of the uh, EP from Radicule Beats S Rank Slaps yo he's got some dope art with it man and some stickers to go with it man and um yeah man y'all tap into uh, Radicule Beats man I'm I'm gonna have him on the show coming up soon but um yeah man he's a sponsor for the show this week man so I appreciate you Radicule Beats man that's uh, R-A-D-I-C-U-L-E Beats um, On all social medias And stuff like that Alright so He's a producer Beat bohemian Writer You know what I mean Decent human being man So Y'all check out Radicule Beats man And uh, Yeah we gonna go right into This episode Sorry if my voice is a little bit Groggy But um But yeah man Um Right now, man, we're going from Japan all the way to nowhere, Oklahoma, man. Featuring my my guy, visual artist, mixed media, you know what I mean? He does beats, samples, all that stuff. He does drawings, album covers, all that stuff, man. So I want y'all to welcome to the show Sleepless and Flatland, man. All right? We're going to get to hear his music, get vibe out to him, and um, yeah, man. We're gonna get it in, man. I'm not. I'm gonna try to keep my talking to a minimum, just cause my voice is a little, a little bit dry ruling. Um, what's that? Somebody said uh, they just lost their voice. It was straight. <laughs> straight like dry rule, yo. Oh man, that was funny, man. Chef Steph, yo. Chef Steph is the one that hit me with that, yo. So, appreciate that last step, Chef, step, Chef Steph. But, um, yeah, man, we're going to vibe out, man. We'll be back with Sleepless and Flatland, man, all right? Peace and love, yo. Popping, y'all. This is Hygieno. You are tuning in to the Rec Show podcast with the good brother Golden Mind. Check it out. One, one.
Yeah, yo, we back, man. This is um, Sleepless in Flatland, man. Nondescript nomenclature. Title track is called Yellow, man. So, y'all check it out, man, on this band camp. But, yo, let's get into the interview. <laughs> Sleepless in Flatland, man. So, first question is for the beat heads and internet, introduce yourself, where you're from, what your name means, and how your name was created, man, and um, and then any collectives that you might be associated with as well, man. All right. So, I'm Forrest, or Sleepless in Flatland. I'm a beat maker and artist from Oklahoma. I like to experiment, and honestly, for years, I just uh, all I did was really abstract stuff, and, you know, I did make music, but as of late, I've been really focusing on the, the uh, art. I go by the moniker Sleepless in Flatland. It's something I picked out for myself back in, like, 2013 or 2014. Uh, dubstep was big, Subtract was on, uh, let's see, there was Teed or Totally Enormous Extinct Dinosaurs. I was listening to a lot of BBC radio at that point in time, so everything on there was like a DJ mix. It was all danceable. You know, at that point in time, what I was geared around, I was wanting to let, find things to listen to that I could dance to myself, or at that point in time, since I biked everywhere, it had to get me moving and stuff like that. It had to get my energy going. So at that point in time, if, it was a, if there was a version of the song, I wanted the remix, or I wanted the dance version of it, (laughs) or I wanted somebody who flipped it in such a manner that, like, caught my interest and got me going, you know? But, yeah, Sleepless in Flatland. It's, uh, pretty much a play on words, with Oklahoma being, you know, flat, and it's, you know, known for lots of tornadoes and stuff like that, it's... Sleepless in Flatland as well. It's also a, a play on uh, this uh, book. So I forget. So a couple of people have figured it out and stuff like that. But there, there was this book about Flatland. And it was uh, based around uh, these uh, these creatures or these entities that only lived in like a uh, singular dimension, if I remember right. But... It's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool little thing. You can look it up online. It's a free PDF, too. So that's really dope. But yeah, it was uh, this... I think it was like... It was this old book. And it's uh, been as, uh, I guess, a satirical piece, actually, if I remember I right. But yeah, it talks about all these, these creatures that live in Flatland, and they just... Talks just about that, so... And then as well, too, like, I, I have insomnia. So, or I, I, for the longest time, I've had insomnia, or I've had trouble sleeping. So that was kind of a reference to that. So I, I'd work, you know, I'd work all day or work all night, because I worked nights for almost a decade there. And so once that happened, I got, I'd work all night, get off, close shop, close it up, get off, come home, and you know, I'd start producing all night, or I'd, you know, we'd throw a house party and, you know, we'd DJ, and, excuse me, we'd, uh, DJ, and that would be it, you know, I'd mix all night, and then we'd get up and do it all over again, <laughs> at that point in time, I played with several, with several monikers, like, there was also, like, Fire 4 and stuff like that, but, uh, uh, Sleepless in Flatland one was the one that kind of stuck because I can't start signing my name off like that. I wasn't really sure what it did one thing. But, you know, that ended up working out. When I was hanging around with my buddy Cody, he went by, uh, goodness, he had a couple monikers, but the one I remember right now is Mantis Complex. And we had a little duo we call ourselves Project Entanglement. You know, we'd throw little house parties and we'd hang out and would come over and we'd mix music. At first it was really bad, but it's, we've got some really cool things going on here and there, you know, train wrecking. But then, you know, we actually ended up getting some really cool things. It was just, unfortunately just one of those cases where we would never actually, like, record stuff and put it out there or anything like that. <laughs> it was, yeah, 
he, it was because of him I actually got into production too, showing me Ableton for the first couple times and stuff like that. And I'd, I'd watch him and I'd kind of see him go through sessions and stuff. And I was, prior to that, I'd been really obsessive about pursuing music or, you know, any audio thing like that. And so, like, I, never, I remember, like, I'd gotten my way into, like, a couple keyboards and stuff like that, or people, when we did the house parties, people would leave guitars with me and stuff like that, or I ended up getting it, like, in that fashion to how I ended up getting into, like, a little uh, bass guitar. Uh, let's see, there's a couple keyboards, too, and stuff like that, like, or in some cases, like, I would take payment, like, through that for services and stuff like that, or people would give me it and stuff, and that was pretty cool, like, I got a couple of acoustic guitars and a nylon like that. This is Sumo Wave, and you're plugged into the Rex Show podcast, The Goldmine. So that's, I don't know, it was like 2013, 2014, while I was still working at Long John Silver's more, way more than full-time, like... I was running my own shop, and I, at that point in time, like, I was working, goodness, I, 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 I would joke and I'd tell people 100 hours a week, but it was really like that, like, I was drinking a lot just to cope and stuff, and we did the house parties and all that, but I got into production and stuff, so, that, that was a fun little time, <laughs> Let's see, I got into production at that point in time with Reaper, and I used the loops that I'd come into and stuff like that, like that came with the program, I think, and I'd stack them and I'd experiment with, uh, you know, getting it really saturated and stuff like that, and thank goodness it had its own built-in limiter and stuff like that. I didn't know any of this stuff at that time, it was, you know, just how it was. <laughs> like, you look at the waveform, it was terrible. But... Yeah, I just had fun with it. And I ended up picking up my SP202 around that point in time. Um, I remember I had sit it on top of the laptop and I, I recorded this Team Rocket sample into there. And like maybe, I think it was this Monopoly track. <laughs> and I ended up like picking out a little loop out of it and like playing with it and like having a lot of fun just enjoying the textures of it and triggering stuff. and. Like, there's actually, like, uh, one of those tracks up on my SoundCloud. I forget what it is. Um, but, yeah, I, I'd start playing with the audio clodges at that point in time. Like, it was a lot of fun. I, I think not too long after that, I ended up purchasing, like, an MP, MPD-24, uh, I think. Or MPD-26. I think it was 26, actually. Yeah, MPD-26. And, uh, had a lot of fun with that, like, it took me a minute to actually grasp what all I needed to do with it, but my buddy he he hooked it up to his and he he mapped it to uh, uh he'd map it to Virtual DJ and it would trigger all the effects for it. And that was really dope. Later on, like a couple of years go by and stuff, I, I'm slowly learning, you know, what it, what it takes to you know hook stuff in and record it and all that stuff and. You know, I, I figure out, you know, how to MIDI map and all that stuff, and I, I'm i starting to make things happen on accidents, and I'm, like, showing my buddy Cody at that point in time, and, you know, it was a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of good stuff like that. I'd end up, I would just obsessively uh, work on stuff, and I, I would just record stuff in and stuff and try to make it work, you know? Two other people I, I ended up working with later on was Narano, uh, Dead Town Productions. I, I ended up participating in one of his battles a couple of years back. Uh, there's Kozunova, Akright 619, uh, Flotonic with uh, Audio Aesthetic. Yo, that's the, <laughs> yo, your, your story, like, every, that's why I ask these questions, man, because everybody's story is different, man, so... Yo, man, but, um, can you recommend some must-see, read, or listen, uh, items for my listeners on their journey in beats and music? Anything. For me, the Netflix series Our Planet High Seas episode, that's like a must. I saw it the other day while I was drawing and doing art. It's a definite must. 
Plus, it's free. Everybody can watch it. Let's see. Some must-reads, must-sees, must-listens, must-read, must-see, must-listen. The Dune series, the books, I, I very much enjoy that. I I need to act, I intend on re- rereading it here soon. As well, Ender's Game series, especially Speaker for the Dead. Um, as well, there would be Crash from Chuck Palahniuk. Uh, it's a really crass and graphic novel, but I found it really enjoyable when I read it. It's been a, several years ago. And I can't, there's, I can't really, I haven't been able to reread it, but I intend on rereading it at some point in time. Um, as well, there would be Francis Bacon, uh, Brush with Violence. You can watch it for free on YouTube. That's uh, really good. Um, I enjoy his art as well. Uh, there's Song Exploder. I used to listen to that all the time. They had uh, breakdown songs and stuff like that. I think there's a Thundercat one on there. There's Tobacco from Black Moth Super Rainbow. Um tutorials I'd, I'd watch a lot of Andrew Wong when I was uh, going to uh, broadcasting school and I was learning production and uh, recording and stuff uh, but yeah I'd, I'd, I listened to a lot of uh, Andrew Wong at that point in time or watched a lot of it even before then I was addicted to him I loved it uh, let's see the 404 day Dibby Masterclass yeah the 404 day Dibby Masterclass that uh, I had, that's how I ended up relearning how to make music after I got sick. <laughs> yeah, yo, yo, I'm gonna put all the links in the description below as well. Um, to everything that you recommend, I always do that for the show, for the listeners, man. So uh, if y'all appreciate that, man, let me know, yo. But, um, yo, from your socials, like, you know, you, you use, like, you're extremely talented on the visual arts and then your music, man, it's like, you're using an SP404 and an SX uh, and a Boss SP202. Like, what other equipment do you use in order to make your beats and stuff like that? Thank you for the compliments. I, I really do. I do appreciate that. Other than the 404 SX and the 202, um, probably one of the biggest components that's been really, really, really one of the most important things that's been to my music or uh, to my own development in music and uh, this growth overall would be cell phones. Um, I, I ended up getting my first smartphone uh, in like 2013 or 2014. Okay. Um, I ended up purchasing it for myself and, and ha- I ended up getting some apps on it. Like there is this little looper app and so you would play things and when you were done with the loop you would tap it and so that's how I, I i would play in my rhythms and i'd figure out how to make it go and i'd make it do things that i'd heard before and imitate those sounds it was a lot of fun it was a lot like very percussive and stuff like that for the most part but then i'd figure out phrases and stuff like that and it was it was a whole bunch of fun doing it like that and then there were other things like uh oh goodness there's another app where it was based around a mathematic functions but it was to produce uh, sound or audio so you you have to program the sound or audio you have to complete the function and that was a lot of fun to do like the uh, the, the timbre of it the the, the, uh, the textures were they were great um, one of my tracks on my band camp sister is actually like that you, you can hear it in there and stuff like that I, I pan it around it it fills out a lot of the low end on that one if i remember right but yeah other than that like my rock uh, koala quite a bit um it, it feels right at home after things like that or playing with uh other apps on the phone and stuff like that um that they had about then was like caustic and stuff like that um that was a lot of fun and then I also, uh, I did, the, after my 202, I picked up, like, a Casio MT-68. So I, I record stuff on that, and uh, that, that would lead to a lot of uh, pads and stuff like that, and uh, just softer textures and stuff like that. I, I was really trying to go for this entire thing. I, I didn't know what I was going for, but I knew I needed something. Like, I, I had a... 
the, the soft pad on another Casio keyboard, older Casio keyboard that I'd gotten from somebody else. And, and like, I, I was like, oh, well, this works. And I'd, I'd had another keyboard uh, that had a mishap, but it had uh, attack filters on it. So you could change the, the attack on it and you could sh- really shape it. And it was a lot of fun to play with. So this one had a, a like very light filter. Uh, Filters. It wasn't it quite as uh, uh, what is it? You, you couldn't ch- you couldn't uh, sweep them like you could the other one, and then it didn't have a movable filter that would go up and down. It would just uh, push button, but you know it, it still it would qu- worked quite well to help shape the sound. It was really nice, giving a great great feeling. You know, I I ended up a. Uh, couple years ago when I was working and stuff like that I was able to afford to pick up um, an Arteria Mini Brute 2 so I was playing with that and stuff like for a minute playing with ARPs and stuff like that and really working on getting some uh, tones and textures there for the low end and stuff like getting some samples together for myself um I said earlier I had the acoustic guitar the nylon and stuff and I'll um so I, I would have little jams and stuff like that with the loopers and stuff like that. And, you know, not, I'm not really that good with the, any, any of that. But, you know, I'd have little things and make them flit around, especially like what I said, the, uh, the little cell phone uh, loopers and stuff like that earlier. That was a big part of that. And uh, some of my earlier projects on Bandcamp are like that. Used Ableton for the majority of that, honestly. Like, it goes in there. Ableton was one of the biggest proponents of my, my thing, so... I, I actually, since I've been sick, I haven't been using Ableton nearly as much. I've, uh, if I do do production, for the most part, it's Koala, or... I'll do some... I've done some beats here and there on other things, but... I, I really don't get into Ableton all that much anymore. Uh, uh, no, I've been started thinking about changing that, so we'll see. Um, yeah. Um, other than that, like, a lot of found sound or Foley or field recordings, um, that I'd pick up. I would, uh, I'd have all this audio on my phone, and I'd, and I'd start using the handheld recorders, and I would get the handheld recorders, and I'd end up putting it onto my laptop, and I would start using those to make my beats and textures and stuff. And that's how I would learn how to do that. Now I'm ha- after I got sick, I ended up having to relearn and stuff like that, and so to, or I didn't even want to. I didn't want it to have any type of rhythm, just because I was just feeling that chaotic. I was like, oh, really embracing it. <laughs> but yeah yeah the found sound the foley and the uh, field recordings definitely because l- later on i ended up going to broadcasting school and uh and then I, I i would go to uh i would go do these radio remotes and stuff and so i'd be out in the f- out into the field and stuff and i'd be out on the gig and I was like oh there's this sound of running water I want this now. or at one point in time actually like I was doing this podcast uh, Brad Reed from Nerds to Men and he ended up then one of the uh, hosts actually uh, said my name I was by a tag for, for a bit yeah handheld recorders and then the cell phones like for sure like yeah, I uh, definitely had a mentality where I was like, I will sample anything and everything. It was kind of like obsessively trying to put stuff together, like because, well, I, I mentioned earlier that I I was uh, out in the field and stuff like that, and I was out doing these radio remotes and stuff, and doing production and recording stuff, like when I was out just here and there and found, doing found sound stuff I actually ended up getting sick like when the lockdown started I, I got really really sick and I had to be on bed rest and I uh, kind of lost it like I, I ended up having to relearn a lot of stuff and uh, it was not not that fun I got like I ended up having to relearn how to draw and stuff like that and 
it was really hard for me to move and I was in a lot of pain of it was difficult to breathe like it hurt to breathe and stuff like that and um, I, I I I was I went to the doc to the uh, to the ER and they were like they chastised me they were like you're a young healthy man you should be fine and so I was like is this all in my head and like my my entire body just felt like it was red hot electricity flowing through my veins and through my through my entire like from in the inside out it was, it was awful um but yeah that's kind of where where those came from um i i was actually if i remember right uh nondescript nomenclature i was putting that together the day that i got sick um because it's a it's a collection of recordings from several years um prior to that like when I was going and doing my radio remotes, actually, like, a collection of stuff um, from when I started the broadcasting school to uh, kind of the end of that period when I actually got sick. So uh, that's kind of a collection of all of that. But anyway, yeah, there, there was just me obsessively putting stuff together as a result of the pandemic. So, like, March 2020, the Utah Jazz and Oklahoma City Thunder um, they 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 had that game, and I was scheduled to do a, a uh, we were going to do a broadcast at the Sheridan, but uh, I it got canceled because uh, you know the uh, the players got tested positive, and then the lockdowns had started already and stuff, and I ended up getting sick later on, and I, I tried to work again, but it was really hard. I I hurt so bad. I don't think it was a nondescript nomenclature yet. It was uh, Don't Overdo It. Uh, uh, Loose Change was the year before that. Yeah, Don't Overdo It, what I put out then. Um, I know with the uh, nondescript nomenclature, it was kind of, I, I put that together, like, wanted to put some mashups on there and, like, really kind of wanted to play with the idea of like mashups and stuff like that and or a live DJing experience or like at one point in time I worked for this DJ company and I remember the boss he, he had to teach me how to DJ properly <laughs> like as I, I was really shy and I, I was like I didn't know what the hell it was like I wanted it to be like what we did for this fashion show where it was like gunfire this one for this these phrases this hook and then the next hook and the next hook you know you just keep it going bang 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 so i wanted it to be like that with the the uh, hyper maximalism tempo maximalism just keep it progressing and keep it going you know um, a lot of uh inspirations i had at that point in time would be like uh, 10 tricks point never and uh, the beach boys daniel lopatin tobacco um I watched it Kira at that point in time. I got sick, so it was a lot of a lot of stuff like that. Um, yeah, I got when I got sick, um, I, I couldn't really do the music like I did before. So it was I, I it was very uh, very difficult for me to do anything, um, and music was such a big part of my life. What's up, y'all? This is Wave Groove from Beat Cinema, and you're plugged into the Rec Show podcast with Golden Mind. cannabis helped a lot <laughs> helped me put that stuff together I think nondescript nomenclature like 
it, it, it's almost like an afterthought for me, to be honest. It's not as well put together, it feels like, for me. Um, I, I wanted to kind of... It was my last attempt at putting something out there, really. I, I probably started with DJing and art around the same time, you know. The DJing was kind of a train wreck, and, but it was a lot of fun. I was fascinated with uh, lots of BBC radio hearing the essential mixes and the, uh, the the tracks that they did play were all danceable and stuff like that. So when I first started, we uh, we were playing virtual DJ, and I I'd play with the note repeats a heck of a lot, and you know, and start figuring out how the, how tempos would go and stuff like that. And then when I got further into it, and I actually like was working for a DJ company and stuff and he like the guy kind of gave me a refresher on stuff and it was a lot of fun um you started to see how things would go and how music could be interconnected and interwoven and like our well, music's been around all my life basically my mom plays cello I started I, I started with violin when I was like in the fourth grade and I played that into middle school and then I ended up having to pick between that and uh, football and I ended up picking football but we, we'd have to sing in church and stuff and grandpa would sing and my mom would sing everybody would sing I was really shy about stuff but my grandpa was a really good singer my uncle too and you know, I ended up uh, picking up the DJing when in like 2013, 2014 and the, uh, the spray painting around then too. I uh, taught myself how to make stencils and I'd, you know, go to my the local library and I'd, I'd, I would copy things and I'd print it out and make it real big and all this stuff. But the DJing too, that, that was about the same time. It was a lot of fun. Man, you know, so DJ, man. Yeah, man. Um, man, yeah, hopefully, yeah, I mean, hopefully your health is getting way better and you're improving and, you know, wishing you all health and all that stuff, you know what I mean? So, let me ask you this. Um, so, the, my, my game called Superheroes, um, you know, it's a game I created where you name your childhood beat childhood teenage and I don't know, like adult beat maker, music producer superheroes, and it could be any genre as well, man, so you know what I mean? Take a stab at it, my guy. So I actually ended up having a lot of fun today going through and uh, kind of revisiting my music past, because I haven't I haven't really had the chance to do that in a long time, and I haven't and then this depth kind of like since since I uh, today since you know I, I was a young adult but yeah I ended up with uh, five note cards worth but yeah U4 uh, uh, I ended up picking up uh, Shrimp Nose Devin Who Alpha Fox uh, let's see I remember back then there was Caldera uh, Let's see. Uh, spell work. If I remember, he was with the uh, Wizards Only crew. Um, I was a big fan of that for a good minute. I would, uh. Oh man. I'd ride, uh. I would listen to the, uh. Their, their Disney and their Pixar tapes. That was a lot of fun. A lot of good memories. Listening to SoundCloud throughout the years or finding these weird band camp joints and listening to them downloading everything and having that to listen to for a good minute like there was a uh, green and gold and uh, uh like repeating patterns and stuff like that a lot of stuff like shlomo i love music period i, I would since I was uh, like 17 it was one of those constants it's one of those things where I had to have it like when I got sick I, I started having migraines and stuff but yeah when I got sick I, it was really hard for me to work on music it was very very difficult I uh I, I found it nearly near impossible because I couldn't make things in time 
I, I couldn't listen to things and it was it was just really hard and plus with the migraines it was near impossible another uh so-called superhero i'd say would be uh daniel lopatin i got obsessed with daniel lopatin or lopatin or whatever his name is 10 tricks point never opn um i heard he went on tour with nine inch nails i was amazed i was just like oh my freaking gosh this is guy is so cool like i i can't listen to replica and i i heard the noise and stuff like that and then i heard all the uh the repeating patterns and stuff and i i had a good old time of listening to that at one point in time it was then repeated it again a couple years later and when uh, garden of delete came out i was amazed i was like what the heck is this this is so crazy and the entire rollout with everything like he had all these websites and this uh lore and stuff and backstory it was it was a hoot um like when you look into daniel opportunity and you find out that like he's all about these world this world building and stuff and this entire mythos and there's all these uh characters he created for it and it was it was it was a lot of fun and then with the later projects I, I wasn't able to keep up with like a job and other things necessarily as much but i i would always look out so when i there was a one oh one oh tricks point never i was like oh my gosh this is so cool um yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to be a little bit more uh punctual about what i'm actually gonna name like other must uh other ones would be uh blomacob wander wonder um that was pro- probably uh what is four four three or four years ago maybe five years ago i don't know no, it wasn't three or four years ago it was probably like five years ago maybe four yeah i think it was like four years ago i was doing delivery and i had this uh i i would listen to uh blomacob wonder wonder as i would do the deliveries <laughs> yeah it was just so amazing to be rolling around town delivering chinese food to everybody as i was playing this as this these beautiful whales i was just it was very moving um other uh let's see other superheroes goodness i i have uh five pages worth i guess <laughs> like i i don't know some of my uh, there's I, i've gone through so many musical journeys and stuff like that and must listens to where it, it's hard for me to just break it down especially when i'm like oh my gosh i love all of this music you know i could go on and what i wanted to do like this little weird little pokemon rap style thing where i was like okay here's all these musical influences here's all of my loves uh because it's you know they're not necessarily all um dj beat maker producers you know they're uh there's quite a bit of uh groups on here and stuff like that or uh musicians and stuff like that because you know i got everybody gets there that has the fly low obsession stage or they're like they want to make the la beat style stuff or or like uh you got your your boom bap and stuff like that or you you know that everybody has a different name for shit you know i ended up buying a whole bunch of cassettes of producers who i really really like enjoyed and uh, i was just and there's also like my favorite fr- like my favorite CDs that I would like to listen to and I'd even go and watch these people live and I, there's other producers who I would go and see live and they were like really big big inspirations and like this music that I would listen to all the fucking time I really fucking loved it like and then I'd go see these shows and it was so fucking amazing that was such a good, that amazing thing to see. Like, I had this synthwave project that I was like, 
you could hear that how I, I, how I went to the Comp Truth show and heard it. <laughs> like, it was so much fucking fun to go see Comp Trues or with Pretty Lights. I don't have those chops like that, but fuck, I wish. <laughs> like, there are a lot of it, a lot of the music, and it helped me uh, keep a big hold on my life. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, um... Yeah, you're right. Like, you know, it is kind of a narrow question to ask, you know, like somebody to name, you know, beat maker, music producers, but, you know, it's a beat. This is a, uh, you know, beat his podcast, man. So I got to ask that question, you know, but you're right, man. You can't just put every single one. It's probably different musicians and stuff, but so can you tell me, like, how. You know how analog beat machines and uh, linking them with the new tech like Koala Sampler. I noticed you use Elf Audio's Koala Sampler, uh, which helps you in your creation of music and your creative process processes and and helps you express your creative side. You know, so go into that a little bit. Man. Honestly, Koala just kind of streamlined it all. It was. Uh... It's kind of like a dream come true, to be honest. <laughs> you get the best of all the worlds and stuff like that, and resampling so easily. Uh, so, so easy. Like, I'm still having to relearn a lot of stuff to try to even get back to where I was. But, it, it just... There's there's other people who I've seen, they leak the Ableton and Koala and all this stuff, and they have it all so, so seamless. Um, it's kind of like a dream come true right now at this point in time and the people that can beats on tablets like I came in on phones with those looper apps it was awesome so the sound manipulation and stuff like that it's it's a lot of fun just to experiment you can record it and stuff and, yeah man I think a lot of people <clears throat> I think a lot of people agree with you on that part as far as um, quality simpler just streamlining the process and making it fun to use and you know, just the possibilities are endless, man. And it's on your mobile phone. You can take it anywhere when you take your mobile phone. But so, my next question is, uh, you know, you can you commissioned art pieces for people and art, and even have some some dope album and B tape cover arts as well. So, like, what's the artistic freedom like between commissioned and album covers, and how should people think about artists? and the art what it's like for me is I'll, either way like I put a lot of time and effort and energy into it um, what I was last year when I was first getting back into the uh, digital art and I was starting to get back into or starting to get into digital drawing I was learning about uh, how to draw and stuff and those processes and how to uh, do the shading and stuff like that I, I, it was a really, really strenuous process, or a time strenuous process, time intensive process, because I would, uh, I, I would just put 40 hours into coloring this background and stuff like that, and it would take me a long, long time. Um, but I was trying, just trying to make it look good and stuff. It's, it's, it's a little rough. Like I don't want to do it unless I have the creative freedom and now luckily like I have the clients I do get most of the time I I, I generally have a almost complete freedom but if I, it isn't like you know it generally I'm not gonna lie like that's what pays my bills <laughs> and if I'm putting 40 hours of work in or in one case it's uh it's coming close to 500 hours there was um last year there was one that was 150 um that was T dots, and you know, it's you have to make it fun for yourself to pretty much, you know. The for as far as it comes with the the freedom for the commissions, the freedom really that comes with it is like if the they, the person has a purpose for it or whatever, like if they do have a purpose for it, they they you know that 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 really works. You know, you can build towards something concrete. Like if I have complete freedom for something I'm it takes me a minute sometimes but I, I might do it or it could end up being the other way where I'm like okay yeah we throw it together and, you know 
And it just kind of, you have to have an open mind and kind of take in the picture and figure it out. Or sometimes you have to figure out other people's expectations is really what it is. It's a game of you have to figure out, okay, what did this, does this person expect to see? And what does everybody else expect to see with that? You know, it's really what it comes down to, especially if you're doing branding. And I always want to make, try to make it my own. Um, uh, it's one thing I've been having to kind of come to terms with or trying to build towards, especially since I, I do my, a lot of my stuff by hand. I have to manually put a lot of the, that color in there because I, I, I'm drawing and I'm coloring it all by hand a lot of the time. Um, and it takes me a long time to do it because of my methods. <laughs> so I have to kind of have people that understand that and then they're open with it. Um, you have to gauge what's needed with everything too. And it's like, kind of with me, I, I, I want each piece to be something I'm proud of. So I will put in that time. I, I do put in that time on each thing. Now I don't really think about it being the 40 hours being so bad anymore, especially if I had a uh, 151 and then uh, like easily I just started getting up to getting these higher and higher numbers and stuff. As far as people regard or think about ours than there are, you know, like... I don't really have all that much. It's kind of just what people make it, you know. There's so many different forms of art and so many different styles. and Like you had the, the Dadaism and stuff like that or the the, uh, the ready-made art where they'd find art pieces that they would just be everyday things and they'd be like, no, this is art. But like kind of photography is like that or... Like, art imitates life. It's kind of the thing. That's, I would go around and I'd find things in my everyday life and I'd be like, this is art. And Or I'd find ridiculous, like, really ridiculous things. Um, absurdity. Absurdism. And I would be like, art. Art. That's kind of... It, it, art is nigh the beholder at that point. So, you know, art is what you make it at that points I've had people tell me that my art is kind of treated like a junkyard or stuff um, or I'd have people tell me I need to have talent I need to go get some talent I need to develop some talent but I, I mean I know what I've made so you can't really worry about it any of that you gotta have to stay true to what you want and stuff like that with what it, what it goes as far as it, when people want they come to me for art that generally it's they want my type of art that's what they want they want what i do um and that's kind of what it comes to like i've gone to that point to where it's like oh forest does what forest does like i could do those weird psychedelic things or what i've been really going towards lately is just trying to get get better at painting um trying, i had this with this impressionist piece of this building um that this guy commissioned me for for his uh, album cover that's gonna come out here soon um yeah, that's that's pretty cool jam in the city and yeah return of the jams i generally have a artistic freedom with it and it, generally that's kind of what it comes to it feels like it's more of a collaboration for everything i guess is the best way to put it um I guess it'd be easier for me to kind of describe my, my process when I work with it for people. Because uh, I always ask my the people who are coming to me for the art and stuff, like, yes, they want my art, but they want me to create it with their vision in mind. So it's kind of like a collaboration every time. Um, it's, I value, that's kind of one of the things I, I would like people to understand is that I value my time very highly and this is what I do to pay the bills. So I can't, like as much as I do want to give away and stuff like that, like I have, I, I have given away. <laughs> but it's, it's hard for me to just be like, ah, uh, yeah, sure. Like you do what you can and you can't really sweat it, you know, like, oh, a couple small drawings here and there. Like, yeah, that's my people's. <laughs> but you can't really get big headed too because it is just doodling so that was kind of what I'm going to right, going through right now is trying to make it fun for myself make it easy make it simple make it to where it flows not overthinking it anymore you know 
I, I would labor over these things. That's really what it sounds like. I would labor over all the art. And I would do that too with the music. Um, that's kind of what I feel like with Koala. It's, it, it's kind of made it all fun again. Especially with this new technology. Like, especially with the uh, handheld stuff. It's, it's fun. And then with Koala, I'm not really necessarily... You know, I'm looking at the screen and stuff like that, but... It, I'm more listening than that stuff. Um, I'm trying to get away from using screens and stuff. It, it's it's hard. Like generally, I, I want my art to be the way I am with my art and my music. I want it to be stuff that would entertain me. I um, I get bored. <laughs> I get really bored, and I I, I wasn't always like that. I, I would was able to kind of keep a keep a beat and stuff like that and entertain myself with stuff but when it comes to the art i want it to be vibrant i want it to be lively and i want it to be good so yeah i hear you know so let me let me ask you this you're an artist what do you think about this whole web3 cryptocurrency blockchain tech boom that's happening right now yeah i'm not really familiar i've looked into it um but i i don't really have the the uh the means to mint and stuff like that uh and i'm not really familiar with enough of these chains to feel comfortable investing like that if i'm honest i i've been just been trying to make ends meet i i haven't really been able to for the most part i this is how i make my living with the art and stuff um so if I, I've seen other people, they've been able to do a little bit better for themselves. And I'd like to try to do that eventually. Um, but I've kind of been of this thing where I, I'm not really sure. Um, to quote uh, what is it? Arthur Weasley from Harry Potter, you know, if you don't see where a thing keeps its brains, you can't really trust it. Um, like I, I, I see directly like on Twitter, a couple of my peers, a lot of my peers they're making money hand over fist for their stuff um so that would be interesting to baby one day look into that and see how how if i could help you know a couple more uh, revenue streams for myself it's kind of like uh you know i want to support my peers and stuff i love the idea of being able to support artists in that fashion that sounds amazing um now that's like a dream come true right there and then i see that see it's all the all the way around and stuff. That's pretty dope. All right. So last question: Like, what should the internet's look out for from Sleepless and Flatland in 2022? You know, how can the internet's team tap into you and, and your music and your art and anything you got going on? Well, you know, I honestly just art for me for the most part. I, I don't really foresee myself. Uh, I, I've had beats I've had uh, offers and stuff like that with, for collaborations I've been intending on trying to come back to the music as, as I can but it's hard sometimes you know like I do what I can when I can but since the art is paying the bills that's what I pay attention to the most and it is uh, you know it, it, it's nice to do the art it, it's enjoyable it's, I really love doing it um like I, I enjoy the music when I can. I, I've been sitting here and there. Like I'll, I'll play with the 404 and the 202 and my my synth and stuff like that. Um, a couple times I've made a couple beats here and there just to kind of get back in the groove of things on Ableton. Uh, you know, or I'll play with Koala and stuff like that. Or I'll make a beat with the uh, with the pocket operators and stuff. Like it, it's a it's a lot of fun. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'll be doing the art thing. Um, yeah, as far as uh, where people can find me, like I'm on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Twitter is Sleepless and Flat. My Instagram is Sleepless and Flatland. I'm also on YouTube. Uh, you can find my Mixcloud, my SoundCloud, like that, Sleepless and Flatland. Or I have a link tree, which is a link tr.ee forward slash Sleepless and Flatland yeah um as far as it goes you know i've got some projects coming out eventually <laughs> as far as it goes though like i can uh no i'll just it's just art 
for me. Like, I've got that 500 hour piece coming out here pretty soon. Um, I've got to finish that up. They've got details on that galore I gotta do, but as well, too, there's a, there's a whole bunch of art. Oh my gosh. I'm looking at selling physicals and stuff, so, yeah. If you need a art commission design, hit me up. Yeah, y'all heard them, man. Y'all heard Sleepers in Flatland, man. Y'all been listening to uh, nondescript nomenclature. Y'all been listening to uh, some joints off of uh, innumerable, innumerable indifferences. You've been listening to some joint from the Loose Change beat tape. Yeah, man. Y'all heard what he said, man. So, Sweetness and Flatland, man. He's done some uh, work with, uh, I think, T Dot and them uh, on their. EP that they got out as well if I'm not mistaken but yeah man so listen man I hope y'all enjoyed this uh this episode and uh tap into everything sleepless and flatland and also um I'm gonna leave everything uh the links in the, the description of the show and stuff like that so you can tap in whenever you want to and uh show love man and um yeah, man. Special shout out and much appreciation to uh, Radicule Beats for um, supporting the show directly, man. I appreciate you, bro. And uh, you yeah, know, hopefully this is the first of many to come. And you know, I'm gonna go ahead and take my ass to sleep now <laughs> and get better, man. And uh, you know, next week come back brand new and stronger and better. You know what I mean? So. Appreciate y'all, man. I love y'all. Have a good week. And, uh, yeah, man. Take care of your mentals and all that chat, all right? Peace and love, yo. See y'all on another one. This is episode number 45, Sleepless in Flatland, the Rex Show Podcast, man. Yeah, we out, yo. Hey, what up? This is Super Duper, and you're tuned in to the Wreck 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 Show with Go Go Golden Mind. Like the NBA when you